soldering. It's just another part of the job, right? Well, that depends on how well you do it. An inadequate soldering job, assuming it passes inspection, can cause leaks, corrosion, and callbacks. But a quality soldering job done on copper pipe will last the life of a system. I'm John Roberts, and today we're going to take a little bit of time to show you how to make these long-lasting, high-quality solder joints. So what is soldering? The American Society of Testing Materials defines it as joining two like metals with a filler metal. In cases of potable water application, the filler metal is lead-free solder. Sounds simple, right? Well, it is if you know how to do it correctly. And here to show us the way is Master Plumber Ronnie Jackson. Ronnie, how's it going today? It's going great, John. Now, before we get started, show us what we need to have on hand to do this job. Well, the first thing we need is a heat source and fuel. The fuels may vary, but we'll get into that in a little bit. We need a cutting tool to cut our pipe, cleaning and reaming tools, a brush for the flux, the flux itself, a high-quality lead-free solder, safety goggles, and of course, a fire extinguisher. I notice you have the Terramet Sterling brand of solder and flux. It's the solder and flux I like to use. It's called the professional choice. It's also NSF certified, so I know it meets a very high standard. And as we get into the process, I'll be able to tell you about some of the characteristics that make this product unique. And also, we're going to take a trip to the factory to see how solder is made. A very interesting process. But right now, back to the job at hand. Ronnie, I guess the first thing we need to do is cut our pipe. You know the rule. Measure twice, cut once. We're going to cut about a 12-inch piece. Right there. Today, we're using a disc-type cutter. You can also use a hacksaw or a bandsaw. What's important is that we make sure we make the cut square with the run of the tube. If we cut the pipe on an angle, it will not fit or penetrate into the base of the cup. Now, I notice you're using a deburring tool, but I've also seen folks out in the field just use a pocket knife to do that job. That works fine. You can use a tool that I have here, a file, or a pocket knife. What's important is that we remove any burrs from the inside cut edge of this pipe. Then with our sand cloth, we want to remove any oxide or surface dirt. Now, you're using a sand cloth there, Ronnie, but what's the difference between the sand cloth, a mesh cloth, and the four-in-one cleaning tool? Well, it's a matter of personal preference. Some contractors you like to use the four-in-one brush, but it can only be used on half and three-quarter pipe. Some contractors like to use mesh cloth because it doesn't leave as much residue. I like using sand cloth because of the way it etches the pipe. Well, what about using chemical cleaners? It's really important that we mechanically clean the pipe and the fitting. We're, we're not just cleaning the pipe, we're also etching it. Etching it gives something for the solder to adhere to. The next thing we want to do is wipe away any residue that's left behind by the sand cloth. Making sure not to touch the clean surfaces with my hand, which might have any oil or dirt on it. Any oil or dirt will interfere with the flow of solder. So what's with all the cleaning, Ronnie? I mean, after all, it's just a pipe. Yes, it is just a pipe. Cleaning is absolutely critical. What we're trying to do is make sure that the space between the pipe and the fitting, that's the capillary space, we want to make sure that the solder flows completely into the capillary space. This is called capillary action. So cleaning is a very important step. It's absolutely crucial. The next thing we want to do is flux the pipe and the fitting. I know there are two different types of flux. Yes, we have two types of flux. We have petroleum-based and we have water-soluble flux, which meets ASTM B813 specification. And that's American Society of Testing Materials. Yes, that's a spec we use for portable drinking water systems. So what's the difference? <laughs> the petroleum-based flux has a much higher evaporation temperature. The lower melting solders that you use, the less this factor comes into play. Today we're using Terramid Sterling lead-free solder, which has a very low melting temperature. So is the burn-off point, is that the main difference? No. Petroleum-based fluxes require that we flush the system with a chemical flushing. Water-based fluxes, we simply just flush with water quickly or just allow it to remain in the system and it will dissipate by itself. So what exactly does the flux do? Flux does many things. 
It removes and dissolves the residual oxides left behind by the sanding. It also prevents the pipe and the fitting from reoxidizing during the heating process. It also assists with the flow of the solder, much like a lubricant. That's that capillary action you referred to earlier. Right, John. We want to make sure that the pipe is all the way into the base of the cup. We also want to make sure that the pipe and fitting are evenly supported so we have an even space in that capillary gap. Great. Now we're ready to solder. Ronnie, tell us a little bit about the solder itself. It looks just like some wire on a spool. Well, that's what it really is, wire on a spool. Maybe this is a good time to take a trip into the plant so we can see how solder really is made. That's a great idea. Let's take a trip over to TerraCorp Emico Incorporated of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That's the home of TerraMet Sterling Lead-Free Solder. TerraCorp Emico is located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They're a totally lead-free plant that manufactures close to 20 unique alloys. Among those alloys is TerraMet Sterling, a patented alloy featuring the lowest melting temperature and highest tensile strength combination of any lead-free solder. And that's what we're going to look at today. This is Tony Lindsay, General Manager of TerraCorp Emico. And Tony, is this where it all gets started? This is where it all gets started, John. These 30-pound billets are blended from specific metals to make a particular alloy. In the case of Sterling, the metals are tin, copper, and selenium. And that's a patented alloy, right? It sure is. No one else in the industry has selenium in their alloy. Selenium gives sterling its low melting temperature, its high tensile strength, and it also serves as a lubricant. Now, why is it so important to have a lubricant in your solder? That adds to the flow of the solder. One of the problems with a lot of lead-free solders is they don't move quickly into the joint. Sterling, because of its selenium, flows smoothly and quickly. Now, why should the contractor care about how quickly the solder flows? There's a simple answer to that, John. The quicker the solder flows, the quicker the job is done. Our low melting temperatures and quick flow means less solder used, jobs completed quickly, and ultimately, a lower cost per joint than the competition. Now, you mentioned tensile strength. What exactly is that? Tensile strength is the amount of water pressure per square inch a joint will withstand. Sterling's tensile strength is 7,130 pounds per square inch. That's pretty impressive. It's the highest in the industry. So next we melt down the metal. Those are some huge kettles. They sure are. Each one holds about 7,000 pounds of molten metal. So what's next? Well, it's extruded into a continuous wire, which is what you see here. Then it's sent to the spooling stations, where it's put on spools, boxed, and made ready for shipping. I also noticed some special certifications on your box here. We're very proud of these certifications. All lead-free solders are required to meet the ASTM specification for use in potable water systems. So, of course, we have that. That's ASTM B32. Right. We have something that not everyone does, an NSF certification. And what does that logo tell us? The NSF logo means that Sterling conforms to a national standard that was found to be totally pure and safe for use in potable water systems. 